So, in 2020, the Tynaweir Metro celebrated its 40th birthday. And as part of the celebrations, which were only mildly inconvenienced by COVID, the Metro operator Nexus partnered with the Newcastle Oral History Unit and Collective at the university to start a project which gathered oral histories, people's memories of the Metro from the past four decades. This involved interviewing the, the key players from the Metro's inception all the way through to its daily running today, but also asking ordinary people throughout the region what their memories are of the Metro when it started all the way through to today. The project aimed to gather a record of the historical significance of the Metro. But more than that, find out really what it means to the ordinary people of the region. And last month, the culmination of the project saw an exhibition in Newcastle displaying artifacts and photos from the history of the Metro, but also recordings of those oral histories. I really loved going to this exhibition, listening to those stories of the people who helped push the development of the Metro over the line when funding was so tight. And it inspired me to talk a little about some of my own memories of the Metro. So that's what this video is going to be. Now, the Metro was already a teenager by the time I came onto the scene. So it was already playing a really integral part in moving people around the region in their daily lives. So I just really wanted to think about what the Metro meant to me as a child and the way it really sparked my interest in public transport and travel and cities and well-being. So if I think about my abiding memories of the Metro as a child, the first thing that comes to mind is probably the first thing that comes to mind for anyone who was a child or is a child riding the Metro, and that is the front seat. There are not many systems in the world where you can sit and look out of the front of the train as it's moving. Funnily enough, I never actually pretended to drive the train. That didn't occur to me. I was just glued to the window, watching the track ahead of us or behind us. I would take the back seat too. And these sorts of special seats, like you get on the DLR, like you get on some automated lines of metros like the Paris Metro, for example, they play a huge part in getting kids, especially excited about transit and traveling. And I think that's really important. And it's going to be a huge shame, as I think everyone agrees, to lose the front seat when the new trains come in for the Metro. But we'll all have our memories of fighting to get that seat and enjoying the view. Another childhood memory that really stands out was traveling to the beach during summer holidays. How many places in the world can you ride a Metro to the beach? And we had the choice of about four of them. It was brilliant. I would absolutely love getting on the train, holding my bucket and spade and stepping off half an hour later, only a short walk away from the sea. Of course, traveling back home covered in sand, we don't talk about that, but it was amazing to be able to, to travel that way. Another thing that I always loved, because I didn't get to do it very often, was crossing the Tyne. Living in Newcastle, traveling into and out of Newcastle, we didn't have much cause to ever cross into Gateshead and South Tyneside using the Metro. So the rare times that we did actually cross the river over the Queen Elizabeth II Bridge was really special for me. That view is second to none for me and I think for most people. If you're ever on the train, you know what I mean. You come out of the tunnel and everyone suddenly turns and watches in awe as you go past those bridges. <laughs> it's absolutely wonderful. And it, it still makes my heart race to this day. But as a child, that was just awe-inspiring. My most cherished memory of the Metro must come from when I was about eight years old. This was the early 2000s and the Metro trains were going through a bit of a colorful phase. <laughs> so there were trains that were red, there were trains that were blue, there were trains that were green. And some of them still had their original livery and I called those the white ones. 
when we were on our way to the big shop at a weekend. Sometimes we'd stop at the level crossing to let a train go past, and I used to play a game with my dad where we would guess what colour the train would be when it came past. No one ever bothered to tell me that most of the trains were in fact red, otherwise I probably would have guessed that more often because I think the blue ones were my favourite. But I really, really loved that game and I would be crossing my fingers on the way, hoping that we'd get stopped at the crossing and see a train. Although the level crossings were a bit of a dual-edged sword because when we got back home after a trip and we'd get off the metro just before the level crossing, the trains make this sound. And I used to be terrified of this. I would have to hang back on the platform with my fingers in my ears, waiting for it to happen because there were so many times where I forgot about it and nearly jumped out of my skin as the horn went off. And another not so Pleasant memory was uh, in the underground stations in Newcastle. For some reason, I used to be absolutely terrified of the wind that would come rushing through the tunnel when a train was approaching. It always used to feel like more wind than you got, say, in London when we travelled there. I used to be afraid that I would be blown away. I would have to cling on to my dad's legs when the train was coming. And thankfully, that is also no longer the case. But Sometimes when I'm standing on the platform when the train is coming, I remember that. And I remember how afraid I was of the noise and the wind. And how as soon as the train got in and I got on it, I was okay and I was enjoying myself. That was just one of those things, I suppose. And yeah, those are some collected memories of riding the Metro when I was a kid. And obviously, as I got older, I started using the Metro more and more too get to school. I used to be riding it almost every day and it never really lost that magic and it still hasn't. <laughs> I can be commuting on a packed train or I can be riding it late at night and it's still really really special. And of course when I was a teenager we were all given the greatest gift from the Metro which was the musical. If you haven't seen it just go and watch it. I have absolutely no idea how it got made or why it got made, but it's the best thing ever. So yes, that's it. Those are my rather rambly Metro memories. And I hope that over the years, I get to make many more. Thanks for watching. Uh...